These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. How does this relate to last semester? Last semester, you learned this basic equation where you identify all the forces and plug them in here. And then a lot of the rest of the semester was just learning individual forces. You learned about the weight, which is m times g, or the friction force, which is mu times n, or the spring force, which is k times x, and then you could plug those in there. Well, now at the beginning of this semester, you've just learned about one new force, which is the electric force, which has its own way of being, uh, uh, of being calculated, mm -hmm. uh, which you also plug in here. By the way, something else that you went over last term, last term every force, you also had to learn how to find its direction because the direction gave you the sign. For example, we know the weight is always down, or the friction is opposing motion, mm -hmm. or the spring force is back towards the, the, the natural length. Well, we also have to know how to find the directions for the electric force so we can figure out the correct sign for that as well. Something else that's challenging this semester is you're gonna be getting a lot of different concepts, and it's important not to get them confused, so let's make sure we know the key concepts. Do you remember what the symbol is for charge? Uh, Q. Right capital or lowercase q is fine. And do you remember what the unit is for charge? Uh, C. Which is coulombs, okay. capital C for coulombs. Do you know whether charge is a vector or a scalar? Um, it's Does charge have a direction? And the answer is no. No, I was confused because I know it has a yeah, that's a good point. Well, a scalar is something with no direction, and a vector is something that does have a direction. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a scalar, because you would never say that something has a charge of positive 5 coulombs north. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Now, the other thing you mentioned was important. A lot of students are under the mistaken impression that scalars don't have signs. But that's not true. Okay. A scalar can have a positive or a negative sign. It just can't have a direction. Now, there are some scalars that are always positive, like distance, and that fools people into thinking that all scalars are always positive, but that's not the case. This is a scalar that could be either positive or negative. That's really all we need to say about charge. But one thing that I think is really important this semester is to memorize the unit for every single concept. I think I emphasized that last semester, but it's even more important this semester where you're going to be learning a lot of new, unintuitive concepts and really the key to getting more intuition for them, or one key, is knowing the units. So the unit here is the Coulomb. Okay. Well, let's do the same thing for the electric force. This is kind of a trick question. What is the symbol for electric force? Uh, e? Or no, the force is F. Yeah. yeah, it's a trick question because it's the yeah. same symbol as for any type of force. Yeah. I was just mentioning earlier that the theme of the whole physics course is just learning on, on one new force after another. Well, this is just one new force that we can symbolize as F. Okay. Now, if we have to distinguish it from other types of forces, sometimes people will write this to show that it's an electric force. Okay. But we won't even bother with that today because today I think we're only going to deal with electric forces. So we'll just use F. Okay. Well, the point here is that forces are just another type. Electric force is another type of force. Here's another trick question. What is the unit for the electric force? Because it's just another type of force. So we don't need to memorize something new here. It's a force, so it has a unit of a newton, just like we saw last semester. Okay. And would the force be a vector or a scalar? Um, it's a vector. Good, good. Forces do have directions. Okay. Forces can be north or south or east or west. Why does this matter? Well, if something is a scalar, well, if something is a vector, then you have to break it into components before you can add them. But scalars don't have to be broken into components. So we never break charges into components, but we do have to break forces into components. That's one reason why we have to know who are the scalars and who are the vectors. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's draw the direction of the forces on each of these charges. Let's draw the force of 1 on 2 and the force of 2 on 1. Mm -hmm. So, like that. Good. 
So I just wanted to make sure that you were familiar with the idea that the force vector should be parallel with the line that connects the two force the, to the two charges. Mm -hmm. So here we have two force vectors which are along the same line as the line that connects the two charges. Okay. This would be the force of charge one on charge two, and this would be the force of charge two on charge one. Mm -hmm. These are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction because they're Newton's third law pair. We know from last semester from Newton's third law, if charge one exerts a force on charge two, then charge two must be exerting a force on charge one, mm -hmm. and they're both electric forces, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So we don't need any special formulas to find the directions. We know that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. We don't need any formula, we can just use our common sense. If we increase Q1, is that going to increase or decrease the force between the charges? Increase Q1. Um, increase? Yeah, the, big, the electric force is coming from the charges. So the bigger the charge, the bigger the force, or at least I should say, if you increase the magnitude of this charge, it'll increase the magnitude of this force. Like you know from last semester, I like to use a dot to indicate a magnitude. So if we're making an equation, should Q1 go in the numerator or the denominator here? To show the relationship between the charge and the force. Oh, um, uh, numerator. Because that would give us a direct relationship. We put it in the numerator, so when this is bigger, this is bigger. Well, if you increase the magnitude of Q2, what happens to the magnitude of the force? Um, it should increase as well. So does Q2 go in the numerator or the denominator? The numerator as well. Common sense. The bigger the charges are, the bigger the force should be. Now, we can introduce a new symbol, R, which is the distance between the two charges. Mm -hmm. Now, R does not stand for radius here, it stands for distance, the distance between the two charges. Well, if the two charges get further apart, just based on common sense, should that increase or decrease the magnitude of the force? Decrease. decrease. So should R go in the numerator or the denominator here? Denominator. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're building up Coulomb's law. I just want to show that a lot of Coulomb's law is common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that you might not figure out from common sense is that this has to be squared. Mm -hmm. And also we need a constant of proportionality. But it should be obvious who goes in the numerator and who goes in the denominator here. This is Coulomb's law, which tells you the magnitude of the electric force. This is the distance between the two charges. Uh, as you mentioned, this is for point charges. Um, maybe this week you're also going to start learning how to deal with more interesting shapes, like spheres or infinite lines or infinite sheets. But we probably won't talk about that too much you and I today. We'll keep focusing on points. Coulomb's law also pretty much works for spheres of charges, too, as long as the charges are um, distributed symmetrically enough. But we're going to focus mainly on points. So this would be the distance between the two points. If you were dealing with spheres, then this would be the distance between the centers of the spheres, not their surfaces. Okay. But we'll focus on the points. This is Coulomb's constant. Um, you need to, um, uh, by the way, have you started working on the homework for this week yet? Okay. Well, when you work for the homework, you have to use this constant a lot. Sometimes they might give you this here, but you also need to know where to find it in the textbook. Do you have your textbook with you? I do. I remember being like 9 times 10 to the 9. They already got it memorized. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. I just wanted to point out that if you look at the inside front cover, here's all the constants. I just wanted to point out that for some reason they left Coulomb's constant out here. So you might want to write it down so that okay. if you ever forget what Coulomb's constant is, you should be able to find it on your inside front cover there. Okay. Of course, if force comes to words, you can look it up in the index. But So you were right. It's 9 times 10 to the 9th, plus there's some complicated units, but uh, we won't worry about the units right now. Actually, I think this is like 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, but usually we round it off to this. This is a formula that only works if you use all SI units, so you must translate everything into SI units. For example, you can't use centimeters. What will be the standard units for R? Yeah. Right, so you've got to put everything in standard units. Uh -huh. Uh, in fact, why don't we actually figure out what the units are for K then? We should be able to do a little problem and figure out the units for K. So let's do that so on paper. Okay. Um, so centimeters squared on mm -hmm. the bottom, and C squared on the top. OK. 
כן? Very good. I would start by just solving this for k. Mm -hmm. And then the units for force are newtons. For r, that's meters squared, and coulombs times coulombs. So one way you could express k is newtons times meters squared times coulombs squared. You could break it down even more because a newton is really a kilogram meter per second squared. Then this is good enough. <laughs>